explanation to come by. We all watched while Len Bias grew into a great All-American around whom Lefty built this year's Maryland basketball team. Len Bias had come a long way and was about to reach for new heights when suddenly, tragically, his life ended. Rick Schwartz takes a look back. It was here at Cole Fieldhouse that the brilliance of Lenny Bias was most evident. This was his playground, and up there, above the rim, was his domain. Alley -oop. My uncle used to work a concession here. He used to sell ice cream, and I used to come and work with him. I used to use my ice cream box as a ticket to get me down on the floor. I used to go downstairs and go down the steps and just sit right behind the bench and watch the guys play. And every game, I just kept on doing it. Until one game, in a football game, I was outside selling ice cream. And after the game was over, I was shooting around in the baskets outside. And the coaches came up there and asked me, who was I? I told them who I was. And they kept a close eye on me since then. Lenny was not a heralded basketball player when he moved a mile up the road to the University of Maryland campus from Northwestern High School. But Leonard, as Coach Lefty Drizel always called him, had a desire to improve, to be the best. Coach was another guy that played a very, very key role in my plan. He had faith in me. He knew that I could play. He just, you know, freshmen, some guys can just come out and play. But some guys just can't they have to get adjusted. And I think I was one of the people that had to get adjusted to the, you know, college life. He adjusted so well and worked so hard that at the end of his sophomore year, he was the most valuable player in the ACC tournament. By his junior year, he was the ACC Player of the Year. And by this year, his senior season, Lenny repeated his ACC Player of the Year and was a consensus All-American. More importantly to his teammates, he was their leader. The guy who almost single-handedly handed Coach Drizel's longtime nemesis, Dean Smith, his first loss at the new Smith Center on the University of North Carolina campus. And then, just two days ago, the hard work and the brilliance on the college basketball court culminated in a dream fulfilled. The Boston Celtics select Len Bias to the University of Maryland. Larry Bird said that if we draft Bias, he's going to come up to the rookie camp. <laughs> That's right. He is very, very high on Bias. They're all high on him. He's the guy we wanted. We got him. We'll be back with today's sports in a moment. I know everybody else here will too. I really can't say a whole lot more except I love you, Leonard, and I miss you. I'll see you in heaven one day. Well, that's what Giselle first saw Lenny play basketball in the sixth grade. Even before then, Lenny dreamed of playing professional basketball. On Tuesday, Lenny's dream came true when he was the first player taken by the Boston Celtics in the NBA draft. Celtic general manager Red Auerbach made the selection. Going to the, to the world champion. So he had the tools and the attitude and the work habits which he got from lefty uh, to be a great player not a contributing player but a great player uh, he was a you know damn good shooter a great athlete he was the best athlete in my opinion by far in the draft in addition to being a first-team All-American, Lenny was the player of the year for the past two years in the ACC and Maryland's all-time leading scorer. There wasn't a thing he couldn't do on a basketball court. I guess I'm kind of a modest type, type guy. A lot of people say, well, how do you do that? And I don't really think it's anything. There's nothing to me. It's small. It's the first week the Tigers have swept the four games in the Orioles. I don't me too. I'm about t 10 years later when I'm old and watching somebody else play and say, well, I used to could do that. And I could do it better than that. type of guy where I always try to be the best that I can be and I always try to outdo everybody else so I just go out and play the best I can I never give up I always want to strive to be the best and I always play for my mom and dad because I say if I play good here then maybe it'll get me to where I want to go and I can take care of my mom my dad my little sisters and brothers seen anybody score 23 points a game at 35 and 41. So I think that I've been really blessed by the Lord and I just thank him for all the talents that I have. I want to, you know, 
want to improve every year in everything I do. School, life, everything, basketball. I just want to be a better, get better and better and better. And now, of course, we talked a couple of weeks ago about where you were hoping. teammates experienced more than their fair share of disappointment. The team would go only 18 and 13. But among their victories was one of the most impressive wins of this year. On February the 20th, Maryland upset then number one ranked North Carolina 77 to 72. Bias as usual was spectacular. It was a victory that memories are made of. Feels great. I, you know, just now standing here talking to you started, you know, make me happy again. I was walking now around. Now that you won that game, then therefore you beat the number one team in the nation. I therefore, will you tell the people you are going to win the NCAA championship? Without a doubt. I would have told you that we wouldn't have beaten. <laughs> but there would be no NCAA championship. Maryland did beat Pepperdine. Len Bias, 26 points. And there was plenty of smiles to go around as Lenny and his teammates showed their unique kind of high five. In his final college game, Len Bias would score 31 points. And although Maryland lost to UNLV, Coach Frizzell had no doubts as to who was the best player in college ball. He's got better inside moves than any player I've ever coached. So, uh, you know, he's a great inside player, great outside player. He does a good job on defense, on the boards and blocking shots. And I think he's the best player in the country because I'm a little biased. The Boston Celtics shared the Maryland Terrapins' enthusiasm for bias. They made him their number one pick. But Lenny Bias told Scott Clark right before the choice that he had a nightmare the night before. Last night I had a dream that I missed the draft. I was thought I was back home, and I was trying to get a ride up here to New York. So that's the only thing that's been on my mind is where I'm going. The Boston Celtics select Len Bias of the University of Maryland. Len Bias was about to realize his lifelong dream. He would be playing for the Boston Celtics. I knew it was going to happen when the guy came over to me when I was sitting down and said, are you packed to go to Boston? I said, oh, yes, I am. So I'm happy to be picked by Boston. I'm going to try to go out there and play the best I can. One of the most popular, one of the greatest players ever to put on a University of Maryland shirt was dead at the age of 22. Coach Lefty Drizel tried his best to express his feelings in a farewell statement earlier this afternoon about Lenny Bias. I mean, I'm sad, but I'm not even worried because I know where Leonard is. I know he's in heaven. And I'm going to miss him, and I know everybody else here will, too. And I really can't say a whole lot more except I love you, Leonard, and I'll miss you. And I'll see you in heaven one day. Lenny Bias, ACC Player of the Year, All-American, Celtics number one draft choice, dead at the age of 22. yesterday the Celtics draft just two days before his death I told him that there was uh, they said in the urine from what I'd understood from the police that there was a trace of cocaine in his urine but again if that's the case he is, is completely and Keith Gatlin who said they were asleep at the time and who have made statements to the police also there basketball players Terry Long and David Gregg neither Long nor Gregg have come forward to talk to the police they were awake at the time of Bias's death also in the dorm at the time, a man identified only as Tribble and who is described as a new friend of Bias. Police sources say it's believed that Tribble gave drugs to Bias as a gift. Sources say police are looking into the possibility that sometime before his death, Tribble and Bias traveled into Washington and that there was a drug transaction at the intersection of Montana and New York Avenues Northeast. Officially, police are just saying the bias death is suspicious. What makes the death suspicious? Uh, it was unattended, very he healthy, uh, young man, uh, for no apparent reason, uh, uh, went into cardiac arrest. They say this is a routine investigation, but it looks anything but routine and could involve administrative, if not criminal, action against other Maryland athletes. Now, earlier today, we talked to Bias's girlfriend, Madeline Woods, about the cocaine allegations. I don't think Lynn has ever touched it before. And if they have found the traces in his urine, then that was the first time. And I can't say that he took it under his own will. I think maybe, I really do think that he may have been uh, pressured by his peers and by his friends 
just because of the celebration that night. Terry Long, David Gregg, a man who goes by the name of Tribble, three men who were with Bias when he died, three men that police desperately want to talk to. They've asked him to come in. So far, they haven't appeared here. Now police are out looking for them. Jim and Susan. Pat, I'm wondering, is there any indication where these fellows might have gone? Have they disappeared from the area? Do we know if anyone's talked with them? Well, one speculation here is that they're out talking to attorneys, and the attorneys are going to try to make some arrangement for them to come in and talk to police. But again, that's just speculation. Police have asked them to come in, but so far they haven't shown up. We've waited here all day. There are investigators inside who have waited here all day for them to come in and talk and tell us what exactly happened before Lynn Bias died. So far, they have not shown. From what I gather, Pat, then, this is not a criminal investigation right now. No. This, again, is just an investigation into the death of Lynn Bias. They don't know where the investigation is going to take them at this point. Pat Collins. Dick Do